All right, all right. God bless you, family of God. Welcome, welcome. It's Friday, so Friday is the day that we get into authentic imitationology. And I decided to take a little turn with the authentic imitationology to stay on that topic, how to imitate the most successful person that has ever lived, ever, the Lord Jesus. Um, so we're going to stay there, but we're more keen in on discipleship. And I heard that if you read First Peter and the book of First Peter and the book of Second Peter, that you can be discipled through those um, chapters, through those books by the Apostle Peter. I'm like, that's I never heard that before until recently. So I said, let's do it then. Let's go through it word for word, chapter for chapter and see if we could be discipled by those two books. And I believe that we're getting some basic important foundational Christian views or Christian principles or how to become more like Christ. It's in those scriptures. I'm seeing it pop out now. So I hope you're seeing it. If you've been with me, this is episode number 24 of Authentic Imitationology. And we're in a series um, talking through or reading through and learning through and being discipled through First Peter and Second Peter. My name is Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. This is the Morning Devo. If you want to join me outside of social media, um, you could go to live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. If at this time you're, you know, you're getting up, you're getting ready for work or you're going to work, I have a podcast that you can listen to the audio-only version of it. So that way you don't have to worry about looking at a screen while you're driving or while you're walking, jogging, exercising. Uh, I have a podcast as well, djsamrock.com forward slash podcast, and you'll find all the podcasts as well. Amen. So welcome back. This is Friday, um, the start of the weekend, right? And I hope you have a great weekend, a great weekend. From the time of this recording, it is a Friday, right? So we try to do these every Fridays, every Friday. So let me um, read what I have here for the title so that way um, we can get it going. The same truths Peter proclaimed remain vitally important to Christians today, to believers today. So I named this one Dishonorable Desires Got to Go. I know that's probably not proper English, but I named it Dishonorable Desires Got to Go. And as a believer and a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, those dishonorable desires they have to go. No mas, right? And we'll find that in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 11 to 17. 1 Peter chapter number 2, verses 11 to 17. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave it on the live chat. Also, if you want to uh, message me um, behind the scenes, you could do that from any social media platform that you're watching from or listening from. And then you could um, inbox me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible, as soon as I see it. So um, let's do this. Let's pray for around 60 seconds. I mean, well, no, I'm not saying pray for just 60 seconds, but around that amount of time, I usually pray. But um, 60 seconds I have in my head for sharing this out after I pray. You see that? I'm already thinking fast forward. So 60 seconds, we'll share this out. We're going to pray first. So if you have any prayer requests anytime during this, even if I'm not live and you have a prayer request, you know, contact me, connect with me. Amen. On the podcast platforms, it should be from whatever platform you're on, because I'm on pretty much all the major um, podcast platforms. So wherever you're listening from on the audio only podcast, there should be a way to connect with me. If all else fails, that's why I always tell people to go to live.sowinnerswithaz.org or sowinnerswithaz.org and you'll find me there, 247. So let's go for it. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you have set us apart in this world, in this life, to live a life that's full of you, that's full of your grace, your mercy, your love, your truth. I thank you, Lord God, that we are um, told in your word to honor the authorities that be. And because we do that, we are honoring you and we're showing our love to you, Lord Jesus. So help us to love, help us to be at peace, help us to walk in peace, help us to show mercy and grace Help us to love one another, as you said, that when we do that, the world will know that we belong to you. So I speak life, Lord God. I thank you for your word over this matter and this whole thing about dishonor and um, desires 
um, that God will leave and flee from your disciples, from your children. Help us do that today. I pray a hedge of protection over myself, my family, my whole bloodline in the powerful name of Jesus. I speak salvation to my family and everybody connected from the other side of the screen and the other side of this microphone. Salvation to them and their families as well. So I speak life concerning all things living and I come against any demonic oppression, um, any demonic possession, any demonic activity that tries to distract. I will walk with you, Lord Jesus. I pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And those who agree, say amen and amen. Let's take a minute to share this out. When we come back, we'll be in First Peter chapter number 2, verses 11 to 17. I'll be right back. Sixty seconds are so fast. So let's get into it. First Peter, first Peter, chapter number two will be here. Amen. And let's go for it. Put it on the screen for those who are listening. I'm going to read the scriptures word for word. Amen. And we'll talk about it. Let's talk about it. That's why I always offer your time. If you have questions, comments, concerns, anything about it, amen. Um, don't hesitate. Amen. So let me get back to here. Wasn't ready yet. So I'm a little bit before today. I'm doing things before it's there. Amen. Amen. So let's go for it. Authentic imitation analogy. Every Friday. This honorable desires got to go. And I put the crown there because this is a kingdom mindset. To be a disciple, we should be kingdom minded because we serve a king of kings. Right? And a lord of lords. We serve a master. Amen. And we are, let's see, servant Leaders in the kingdom of God. Servant leaders. First Peter chapter 2, let's start from verses 11 and 12. Bible says, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world to abstain from sensual urges, those dishonorable desires that wage war against the soul. Verse 12. Keep your behavior excellent among the unsaved. Very important, right? Gentiles, conduct yourself honorably with graciousness and integrity so that for whatever reason they may slander you as evildoers, yet by observing your good deeds, they may instead come to glorify God. Praise God. And that D is a footnote we'll get to in a minute. In the day of visitation, when he looks upon them with mercy. And that footnote, footnote that we see where it says glorify God is a footnote. So I decided to put it on here. It means another view interprets this as the day when the wicked are judged by God. A day of judgment is coming. And that's why I cringe when I hear a mocker of God or unbeliever or someone who is um, just rejecting the gospel. They say, you can't judge me. Only God could judge me. And I'm, I cringe. I say, yeah, he, and he is going to judge you. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in John chapter 3 uh, that, you know, after 16, after we hear, in the, um, after we hear um, for God so loved the world. That scripture that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Keep on reading. It says, if you reject that, if you don't believe, you stand condemned already. 
In other words, you, you're judging yourself by not believing in the one who people say is going to judge them, which they're right. God will judge. Amen. He would judge uh, when the wicked are judged by God. It's going to be that day. That day is coming. Amen. And if you reject this message, you reject the gospel, and you don't want to be a disciple of the Lord, listen, this is a choice. I don't see anywhere in Scripture, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't see anywhere in Scripture where it says that God forces us to be a disciple, or God forces us to believe, or God forces us to worship Him. Right? So it's a relationship. And a relationship, when you have a relationship with somebody, nobody should be forcing anything. You should want to have a relationship with someone. You shouldn't be forced into a relationship with anyone. 1 Peter 2, 11 and 12. Let's keep on going. This one is 1 Peter chapter 2, 13 and 15. The Bible says, Submit yourselves to the authority of every human institution for the sake of the Lord. To honor his name. Whether it is to a king as one in a position of power or to governors as sent by him to bring punishment to those who do wrong and to praise and encourage those who do right. Verse 15, for it is the will of God that by doing right, you may silence, muzzle, gag the culpable ignorance and irresponsible criticisms of foolish people. So let's go, let's hit this authority part, right? Because a lot of people war against authority. I've been accused of warring against authority. But here it is. Submit yourselves to the authority of every human institution for the sake of the Lord. Now when you when you submit yourself to authority, you're doing that for the sake of the Lord. And I think about servicing to people. When I serve someone, whether it's a ministry, church, or wherever, I always think of Colossians. I believe it's chapter 3, where it says, you know, do your best unto the Lord. Like, whatever you do, do it unto the Lord, because your reward comes from the Lord. And you are literally honoring God by giving your best service to someone else. You're honoring God. And even in the authority, uh, I know a lot of people that are believers, my brothers and my sisters, they don't want to get involved in political issues. They don't want to get involved with what's happening with the authorities and the rulers of this world. But here's a scripture that can challenge that for us to really ponder and think about. Submit yourselves to every human institution for the sake of the Lord, to honor his name. We're not, we're not siding with parties. We're not siding. We're honoring the Lord by submitting ourselves to every institution for the sake of the Lord's name, for the sake of the Lord. Whether it is a king as one in position of power or to governors as sent by him. You know, the government, at least in the United States, I don't know any reason for all the governments, but generally, and the way God ordained it, he wants the government, who are in posi- people who are in positions of power, to bring punishment to those who do wrong. This whole thing about Christian persecution, that's wrong. But they feel like they're punishing us because we're the ones that are troublemakers. We're doing things wrong because the system of this world doesn't understand discipleship of Christ. They don't understand disciples of Christ. They don't understand the Lord's people. So because they don't understand it, that brings fear. A lot of times, if you don't understand something, um, you're fearful of something, and you'll misinterpret and you'll misunderstand. But the governors and the authorities that God set up in this world were actually set up to bring punishment to those who do wrong, not those who do right, and to praise and encourage those who do right. So we're supposed to be, as believers, Right, standing up for righteousness, we're supposed to be praised, and I don't know if that's happening in this world system. That's why the word the word sticks out when it comes to the world, and that's why we're set apart. We are in this world, we're not of this world. Verse fifteen: For it is the will of God 
that by doing right you may silence, muzzle, gag the ignorance and irresponsible criticisms of foolish people. And what is a fool according to scripture? A fool is anyone who says in their heart that there is no God. Let's get to the end here. And we'll camp out here. Uh, 1 Peter 2, 16 and 17. Live as free people. I'm going to say that again. Live as free people. But do not use your freedom as a cover or pretext for evil. Why would Apostle Peter say that to believers? I believe because it was happening. People were taking their freedom in Christ and they were using it as a cover to do evil. But use it and live as bond servants of God. Bond servants, those are those servants, right, that have a, a, more than allegiance to God, but they really serve the Lord. They are bonded. They're bond servants of God. And verse 17 says, show respect for all people. Treat them honorably. As a disciple, we are called to show respect for all people and treat them honorably. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God. Honor the king. That is a, a, I like that for a shirt. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. I would literally wear that if somebody designs a t-shirt or a sweater or hoodie like that. I love that. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. We're in a kingdom, so we should be kingdom representatives to have a kingdom mindset, right? We're in a kingdom, so we should follow the example of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So that right there will disciple us, will teach us, will train us in righteousness. All that that we read, right? The powerful scriptures that we just read will help us. I always say like this. I want to be in the will of God. So that means I have to be aligned to his word, the will of God, aligned to the will of God, and be formed by the word of God. So I'm, that's what I'm trying to do as a disciple of the Lord Jesus. And I'm trying to, you know, persuade. Yeah, I'm trying to persuade you to do the same. Amen. Follow the Lord. It's an exciting road. Some people say, man, that's lame. That's corny. It's going to be boring. I can't do this and I can't do that. Some people are looking at it in a very negative way. But to be a disciple of the Lord, we just saw a freedom passage right there. We're free in Christ, but we're not to use our freedom and take it for advantage and use our freedom to do evil. We're supposed to use our freedom to do good for all people, respect all people, be honorable people as disciples of the Lord, not dishonor people, honor people, right? And to me, that's second nature. I've always been a polite person. Um, even before Christ, I was just an angry, polite person. And a lot of people didn't know I was angry. From 15 years old, when my dad died, all the way to 30 years old, I was a very angry person. And you know what's crazy? God, when he saved me, he took that anger and he made me so mellowed out. He made me so, like, I get angry every now and then. But mind you, I used to live angry. I no longer live angry. I live in the joy of the Lord now. Since 2001, since I've been saved, but sometimes I get mad, sometimes I get angry, but like my response is totally different. Sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll get in the flesh, only for certain areas. When I see certain things, I'll get in the flesh um, quickly, and I'm not going to tell you what's my trigger because not everybody on these social media streets and on these lives and on the podcast, not everybody is my friend, right? I'll just leave it like that, but. There are certain things uh, that the Lord is helping me through. Amen. But I'm like slow to respond to things. I'm asking the Lord, okay, um, I know, I know I'm changed. I'm a changed man because well, back in the day, I would react, boom. But now I took the attribute, I guess, of the Lord. He's slow to anger. Amen. And I'm slow, really slow to anger now. Really slow. Um, so I'm thinking, well, that's just maturity then, because sometimes I want to say something, I want to do something right away. And the Lord is like, you do it when I tell you to do it. If you need to respond or if you need to, uh, you know, ask questions, if you need to do whatever you have to do, I need to do it in peace 
and in love. So today and every day, I decide to be in peace and love. And sometimes that makes people more angry at me, right? Like, why aren't you responding? And, and you know, they, they can't figure it out. The peace of God, listen, the world can't understand the peace that God gives us. Cannot. They could try their best. They could try to say, well, you know, he was always a peaceful person or, you know, that religion he's in is causing him to be. No, the peace of God transcends all worldly wisdom and understanding. God gives us that peace. Jesus gives us the peace that this world does not understand. But listen, I want to exchange that peace that God gives me because I have peace with God and a peace of God. I want to exchange that for a billion dollars. People say, yeah, okay." I'm telling you. You can have all the money you want, all the fame, all the fortune, all the women, all the men, all the uh, possessions you want. And if you don't have peace, it's not you're not going to be satisfied. You're not going to have be happy, right? So I'll take the joy, thank you, of the Lord. I'll take the peace of God, thank you. I'll take that from me, and I'll live that way. Amen? But I'm not saying that you're supposed to be, you know, so like, just ignore everything that happens. I'm not saying that. I'm saying live according to how God wants us to live, according to his word. And I'm getting so much out of this little book. These are are tiny books. Amen. First Peter, second Peter. And we're beloved. Amen. Uh, Aliens and strangers in this world. If you're a disciple of the Lord, if you love Jesus, amen, you know that we're the aliens. I know people, my uncle believes in aliens. He thinks they're here right now. And I agree with him. I say, yeah, we're aliens. Believers in Christ are aliens in this world. We're supposed to abstain, not entertain. We're supposed to abstain, abstain from the sensual urges because those are dishonorable desires. So dishonorable desires got to go. Well, we have these um, desires. Well, I'm, I'm betting. I was just talking to a brother in law yesterday a little briefly about that. We're bombarded. This world bombards us with all kind of perversion, with all kind of um, sensuality. The music has it. The billboards while we're driving has it on the billboards. Uh, Movies, the videos. It's all around us. So some of those things will try to attach to our soul. And we have to abstain. As a believer, as a disciple, abstain. From the sensual urges, those dishonorable desires that wage war against the soul. If you're born again, remember your soul is saved. You have a saved soul. Now, you don't have the same soul that you had before Jesus saved you or saved me. Right? We have a saved soul. That's why 12, verse 12 says, keep your behavior excellent among the unsaved we're the ones that are saved. So we're the ones that are responsible to keep an excellent behavior among the Gentiles, among the unsaved. Conduct yourself honorably. So dishonorable desires got to go. And in exchange for that, while it's those desires are going, we pick up honor, graciousness, and integrity. Pick those things up. Those are godly um, traits. That's the way of the disciples. So that for whatever reason, they may slander you as evildoers, yet by observing your good deeds, they may instead come to glorify God. Praise God. In the day of visitation. That's a, that's such a nice way. The day of visitation. To phrase that when other versions says the day when the wicked will be judged or are judged. And here we have it in the Amplified says in the day of visitation. Sounds very nice, right? When he looks upon them with mercy. Wow. Uh, God is so good. Amen. So we're supposed to be disciples full of grace, full of mercy, full of love, honoring. And we're supposed to be having this integrity that even if people talk and and slander us for whatever reason and call us evildoers. um, Instead, they will glorify God when they see that our behavior is honorable and that we love Jesus and we love one another. Those slanderous um, things won't stand against um, the integrity of a disciple of the Lord. 
Submit. That's a word that a lot of people have trouble with. And to, to be honest, I've never had the trouble submitting to God or submitting to um, leadership. Never had an issue with it. Never. I said, okay, I'll submit as long as, um, you know, whatever I'm submitting to is honoring God. So if you're honoring God, I submit to your authority. But in this passage, it's talking about worldly authority, institutions um, that are in the world, positions like kings that have power, governors, right, as sent by him to bring punishment to those who do wrong. And they also supposed to praise and encourage those who do right. In the world system, you just don't see that. Amen. But the word says it. And the world has to line up to what the word says eventually. Right? Verse 15. It is the will of God that by doing right, you may silence the ignorance and irresponsible criticism of us foolish people. I don't know what the will of God for a disciple is for. Is for is. I don't know what the will of God is over my life. Here's a will. One of the wills of God over your life is that um, for it is the will of God that by doing right, do right, that's the will of God, you may silence the ignorance and irresponsible criticisms of foolish people. Amen. I got two more minutes here. Just checking the time. That's why I keep on looking the other way. And of course, I love it. Live as free people. I will put that on a shirt too. Live as free people. Come on, man, we, we, we have this freedom. We're not bound to sin anymore, so that means we're free. We're not bound to religion. We're free. We're not bound to traditions of men. We're free. But, see, it says it right there, First Peter chapter 2, verse number 16, but do not use your freedom as a cover or a pretext for evil, right? But use it and live. So the opposite must apply. If you don't use this freedom for good, you are actually not going to live the way God wants you to live. You'll probably be dead in your sin. As bond servants of God, verse 17, show respect for all people. Treat them honorably for all people. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God. Honor the king. Somebody, I have friends that do shirts and hoodies and apparel, somebody take that. Love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Put a crown on that. That's a kingdom mindset right there as a believer and as a disciple in Christ. So I'm out of here. I hope you have a great rest of the day, a great weekend. This is your brother Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rob, blessing you in the name of Jesus. Go through the scriptures. Read the whole chapter. Go forward. Go past what I'm reading, right? Continue to read First Peter, the book of First Peter. Read the whole thing through. Amen. It would do your soul and your spirit good. So God bless you all. Thank you for hanging out with me. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace. <laughs>